No, no, no. You can say I'm not a male. Then that's fine. I'm not buying you anyway. Yeah. But you can never say I'm not a man. Because if we had to look and compare notes, I'm more of a man than most South African men will ever be. Introducing the epitome of luxury living, Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits. Um, do you know what's funny? Uh, you are perceived as Umuntu who doesn't take no for an answer, but you're going to correct me. Also as a person who just stands up immediately for what they believe in. Because I, I came with some water and you were like, darling, we're not doing still water. No, we're definitely not doing still water. <laughs> <laughs> so I, what I've learned over the past couple of years is that yeah. um, you're probably not going to get. Because the thing is, Katia, as you go a store, for example, or you bought no goods, no man, the price of this thing doesn't feel right. Furniture stores, I love bag at discount stores. Mm-hmm. And if you don't speak up, you're never going to know if there's a bigger discount than the one that you have. Sure. So I know that's a very dumb example, but... I'm just now learning good. See, I can say things, but the tone is different with each person. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, I feel like sometimes if I make myself stupid, then people don't find me intimidating. Mm-hmm. So that's all I do. <laughs> do you acknowledge, though, that you have a strong personality? Yeah. yeah. I, I acknowledge that I acknowledge that I have a strong personality and it's overpowering mm-hmm. to someone who might not know or figure themselves out as yet, but also someone who doesn't know how to read tone. Yeah. Because yeah. I can say the same thing in different ways and it will mean different things. Sure. So I'm very aware of my personality. And sometimes also it makes me become very recluse. Man, sitting down in a band. Like I go quiet. So you go quiet to protect others from being overwhelmed by the fact that you know what you overpower them. Yeah. I, lit- I literally, I mean, I don't want to fix that in any, in any space um, in public and I'm in a space where probably I, there's no one that I know. I can easily communicate with everyone yeah. and, and have everyone like me, you know, but I don't want to fix that in me in a corner because I know that if I go and say, then my personality could overpower you. So I read the room first. Yeah. Then I know, okay, cool. I don't want to fix that in my corner. I'm not going to talk to that one. I'm not yeah. going to speak to that one. So I'm very aware of how bold my personality is. And it, it rubs some people off the wrong way. <laughs> and where do you think this boldness comes from? Um, I, 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 you can correct me if I'm wrong, because I could sense it comes from a place of what's your Zulu culturally. Mm-hmm. It also comes from a place that maybe because of the system and just how we are all still largely traditional, mm-hmm. you were assigned a gender of being male. So as a Zulu black man, you're supposed to be strong. You're supposed to be out there. You're supposed to be uh, uh, very verbose about what you want and you must be steadfast. Do you think that's where it comes from? I think it comes from that place. Not as much. I didn't grow up in a very traditional home because we didn't have a, a dad. Okay. So we grew up with, with very feminine energy with my mom. And my mom always tried to... I don't use the word shrink us as if it's a bad thing, but she always tried to go to, we must be humble. Because Chris Supega, so you always have to, we are Kela, we are Nana, you are asking, you are begging. You know, we grew up with nothing. So um, when I started having something, 
I realized this is not who I am. Yeah, I'm not yeah. this quiet, timid, shy sure. child. Sure. I was that because if I was this and then if I go, my and I'm asking for sugar that we yeah. don't have, yeah. I'm not going to get that sugar. I get that. So um, um, it, 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 it comes from a place of always being cocooned. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, huh. But definitely the Zulu in me <laughs> is very much also, it plays a factor, I think. Are you not worried, though, that especially coming back to your social media, that it can be perceived as arrogance? And we know that arrogance has a downfall some, somewhere or another. And Leondo is going to quickly make you fall as quickly as you, ro you rose. I'm actually not worried about being perceived as arrogance. I don't think I've ever met a person that has ever described me as arrogant. Mm -hmm. I, my worry is that now I'm being branded as being a bully. Sure. That's my worry. Mm -hmm. um, um, well, not even that much of a worry because I think Omuntu who has, takes the time to understand what I'm saying, how I'm saying it, and, and reads the room and is smart enough, they'll realize that it's, not, it's actually not true. But unfortunately, that's not the case with everyone in, in anything. So I'm not worried about being arrogant because I don't think I come across as arrogant, but I do know I come across as intimidating. And then people read that as being a bully. So I am conscious of that. However, when I then try and not, not be me, then people automatically, like, this is not you. And then when I'm me, then it's like, ah, when are you a bully? And I'm like, okay, guys, which version of me do you want? Would you say being a bully is ex is extreme description of okay. your personality okay. and it's not factual? It's not factual. Mm -hmm. um, I think we all need to understand what a bully is firstly. Um, and I think people sometimes will use the word bullying very loosely. Sure. Um, I've never bullied a single person. Um, I remember there was a time where I opened the platform and opened the conversation and I had a live that had around about 40,000 people sitting in it. And I said, guys, take me through where you guys, it wasn't referencing the show that I was on. I said, take me where you thought I was a bully because a bully is someone that makes someone feel inferior. Like I will bully you and go out of my way to make you feel inferior for whatever reason that it may be. I don't make people feel inferior. I match your energy. There's a difference. And if people want to title me as a bully, I don't think there's much I can change about that until you are able to come and say to me, Dominique, when you were sitting with this specific person, umtugile, Wati, 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 and therefore you're a bully. Mm -hmm. Then I'll take accountability for it. But also, I'm not perfect. I know that in someone's story, I'm a bully. I know that in someone's story, I intimidated them. I know in someone's story, I'm not, I'm not perfect. I think it's not bad to be not perfect. In someone's story, you're, you're the villain. You're the villain. Yeah. And it's okay sometimes to accept villainhood yeah. because yeah. every single time people have made me a villain, it's paid my bills. And every single time they've liked me, they didn't pay my bills. Have you not? then clutched on that being a villain pays your bills so much to the extent that you will highlight the villain parts of your personality so that you keep getting more money. Are you not mm -hmm. scared that's who you are becoming? No. My mom will quickly, quickly, my call family, my mom, my friends will quickly call me out. I have a very good support structure that even when I realize or when everyone is turning because they've turned many times on me, um, I quickly go to my support structure and I go, okay, guys, those are people are saying, this is what I put out, what do you guys believe? And I am very fortunate to have the type of friends and the type of family that will quickly pick up the phone and go, yeah, we're not going to allow big deal. Sure. So they hold me accountable. Yeah. And the one thing that I don't do is I don't privatize anything from my mom. My mom sees my statuses as they are. My mom sees my videos as they are. I hey. talk to my mom. So... If she doesn't see anything wrong with it, and my mom is the most wholesome person you will ever meet, if she doesn't see anything wrong with it, my support system doesn't see anything wrong with it, then that's just the public having a conversation. And you need to, in the space that I'm in, people need to talk about you. Sure. Um, the thing is, you just can't control what they say about you, but talking about you is vital. So I'm okay with people talking about me. Um, until such time that I bully someone and people call me out and Give me exactly where I bullied someone. It's okay. For now, though, let's go with I have a strong personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do, do you acknowledge that in you saying that perhaps because you are Zulu, mm. perhaps that you realize that you don't have a timid personality, mm -hmm. that there are people who are just naturally calm. Mm -hmm. There are people who are quiet naturally mm -hmm. and they can't do anything about it. Yeah. There are people 
who grew up in difficult circumstances that made them see things in a toxic manner. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they struggle with communicating, they struggle with how they say things. Mm -hmm. There are people whose grammar is just bad. Mm -hmm. And with TikTok and social media where you get feedback from your audience, mm -hmm. sometimes you'll find a person whose grammar is bad. Mm -hmm. So they'll put something in a way that not necessarily how they mean it, but because their communication skills are poor, then it comes across badly. Mm -hmm. So do you not feel that you should offer people a bit of grace sometimes instead of coming loud, proud with your confidence onto them? But I don't impose my confidence on anyone. Yeah. So you can be timid, you can be quiet, and that's okay. I don't impose. I think, I don't want to say I'm different mm -hmm. because then it makes it seem like I think I'm special above someone else. Mm. But I think my loudness came at a time where everyone was almost pulling back, sure. you know, trying to refine themselves. And I just, I mean, I post my videos in a dirty house if I want to, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. I am, not, I don't impose myself on anyone. I say what I need to say and I keep it moving. The people that receive a response from me um, with a message that they come and write are people that come and write something that's bigoted, something that is homophobic. Largely, it's almost something homophobic. Sure. Or, or you're bullying someone. Like I now there's a, a video of a girl where she's crying. I think I was there somewhere in case it and I just forgot exactly where she's from. She's crying and everyone's like, Dominique, you are, can fight this, you know? So I acknowledge who I am and the stance I have, but I also know the responsibility that comes with that. I don't impose myself on anyone. There are many people that I bump into that are generally shy. Yeah. Um, and, and we start to really talk and I match the tone. I read the room. On TikTok, unfortunately, I am in the room. <laughs> I'm alone in the room. I'm alone in the room, so yeah. there's no one to consider, sure. you know? But if you bump into me, anyone that has ever met me, I don't think I anyone can ever say, hey, Dominique was like this. I'm just me, me now. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I, I don't impose myself on anyone. I, I, I'm glad you speak about the fact that uh, the, the, the homophobia and the bigotry you deal with there and then. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a lot of queer people who've been able to do that. In fact, many queer people don't have a voice. Um, the, way, the way the world has hurt them and disgruntled them, they've chosen to be in a cocoon rather, mm. live a private life quietly in the mm -hmm. corner with people whom they trust, right? Yeah. You are going and competing on a national, international level in terms of your personality with others. And you're saying, this is the end of it. No is no. Okay. Um, you're going to be kind to us queer people. You're going to treat us with respect that we deserve. And you're just not going to be mean to us because you can and you can just get away with it. Right. Why do you, why did you take on that huge responsibility? Because it's a burden. It happened by accident, if I'm being very honest with you. Um, it happened by accident. It wasn't anything that I set out to do. Um, so I started posting videos on TikTok and they were just funny little quirky videos um, and people liked them. Then people liked the way I dressed. They liked the way my makeup was done. And people watched me evolve also because the way I wore my wigs uh, last year is not the same way I do it this year. So people just liked Dominique. Then the homophobia came when people established that I wasn't female. Okay. Because for the it took majority, a it took a while for yeah. South Africa to catch on with no man that's not a girl. <laughs> I was just Dominique for a very long time. And I didn't mind it. I didn't care because I'm non-binary. Um, and then when the homophobia came, I started ignoring it. I started, I used to cry. I'd cry a lot in my room. I'd sit there and I'd cry reading a comment of someone telling me how they're going to kill me, how I deserve to die, da, 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 da. And then I realized they're not just doing that with me. There are other queer people who are just posting dance videos and they still have the same, okay, my videos I speak, but the person that's dancing is not really saying anything. Sure. But you're still hating on They're them. not harming you in They're any not manner. harming you in any Nina, you can say, ah, Dominic is a big, you know, there are things you can say because I'm sure. speaking. Yeah. A person that's dancing is doing nothing to you. I remember one day I received the very first, um, not the very first, but it was the one that stuck. I received a comment from someone who was literally describing how they would kill me, their fantasy of how they would go about killing me. Hmm. And then I asked myself, okay, Shap, if he is so confident in writing this, he might be as confident to execute it, or he might reach someone that doesn't have as strong of a personality as I. When that comment came, the Dominique you see now switched on. Was born. Yes. And then I was like, Shap, you want to fight? Let's fight. Sure. Then I chose how I am going to fight. Mm -hmm. And then now I stand for 
I don't want to say I stand for queer people. I can't yeah. speak for all of them. Yeah. But I stand for you are not going to be the reason I go back to crying again. I hate so that's what I do every day. I'm literally telling you when I'm going you can say whatever you want to say. I'm going to fight you. Whether people agree with how I fight, that's a different subject on its own. Sure. But when uh, you are not going to be the reason I go back to the Dominique when they started TikTok, I used to sit and cry at your comments. I'm human. That's it. I won't spend 30 years figuring out who I am. And at the time where I do figure out who I am, yeah. I'm content with who I am. Yeah. In fact, not just content. I look in the mirror and I feel beautiful. Yeah. I feel exceptionally beautiful. <laughs> and it takes a long time to build that level of self-esteem. And you're just going to spew hate. La, la, la. Like, and, 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 and my thing is, in the, if you get into that cool or, or that, that really ticks me off, is the fact that the people that come and comment, majority of them are not that straight. So here you are living in a closet. You are literally living in a closet, hiding yourself. And you know how painful that is for you. Mm. And instead of creating a society where someone like yourself can come out, yeah, yeah. you are creating a society where I'm supposed to hide myself, yeah. just like how you are. And then the straight people that are there want me to seek their approval and their acceptance to exist. To exist. You can't, I can't get approval and, uh, and, and acceptance yeah. from you. You're not God. Because yeah. the moment I seek your validation for my existence, it means you are superior than me and yeah. you are not. Yeah. So yeah. if I have to remind you by writing to your employer via email, then that's I'm going to remind you. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. Yes, now I get the comments of there are many other gay people that came before you. They've never been like this. Yeah, yeah. Do you know the demons they are fighting? No, you don't. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, wh why, do you, why do you think your particular look, because I can tell you my opinion on why I think you are treated this way by people who are either heterosexual or people who are hiding and they are not really heterosexual. Mm -hmm. Why do you think your femininity and how bold you are in how you look, how you present yourself, um, overwhelms them or offends them so much. Because as you say, there have been queer people before you, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden, Ngati, going king of queer, but Dominic Ngati, but too much, mm. for the lack of a better word. Mm. I think firstly, I, I acknowledge that I'm a fetish to a lot of men. Okay. I'm a fetish to a lot of men. Some admit it, some don't. Okay. Straight, gay, bisexual, discovering, whatever. Yeah. To a lot of men, I'm a fetish. Yeah. And because they can't attain me, they then want to break me. Sure. Um, so that's the first element that I have not acknowledged a while ago. Mm -hmm. um, for men, I'm an easy access to become gay. Okay. You know, because I look like a woman, but I'm a man. Okay. You know, so gay fetish, that's the first thing. Secondly, you then get the second type of men who have been taught that a man must be like this, right? But they don't fulfill or tick those boxes themselves. Mm, mm. Because I've asked men before who have come to me and were, had the homophobic thinking. And I said, okay, do you think you know the definition of what a man must be or what a male species must be? They're like, indoor, I'm like, okay, shut. So what is it that I am not doing that fulfills being a man. Mm. Is my mom's house not built? I'm mm -hmm. building it with my money. Mm -hmm. And my sister's not university. I pay for them. Mm -hmm. When my brother passed on, did I not lead as the firstborn child and bury my brother? Sure. I did that. Sure. Am I not fulfilling societal um, 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 uh, responsibilities like feeding the needy? I'm doing that. Is that not what a man is? Yes, it is. Then which element of me as Dominique and, and this manhood that you want to uphold, am I not fulfilling that grinds you such a way? Mm. No one has ever given me an answer because everyone has an idea of what a man must be and they forget to separate male and man. Sure. Male is what you are born with. It's, yeah. it's your body. Man is how you act, sure. how protective you are. Yeah. When you're walking with a woman, you don't let them walk on the side of the road. or you, They walk in the middle. You open the door. You take care of kids. You give them something. Sure. That's being a man. You mm. are a figure of society. Because men are also the ones that painted women as fragile. Mm. As much as we know that they're not, they're not yeah. they painted women as fragile. Yeah. And then they came in with the savior complex. Say, As a man, I'm going to save you. you. But the same men that are saying the same thing, man, savior complex, are not fulfilling that because they are the same ones that are, are, are increasing the GBV stats, rape 
da, 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 da. So when those things are happening, the same men that are worried about me wearing a wig and makeup are silent when there are women and kids being beaten upon, being raped upon. So really, what is a man then? Because I fulfill what I understand a man to be. Yeah. And I'm not saying my understanding is the same as yours. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that you are confusing what you think a male species should be. Which is you want me to be with a woman. You want me to be uh, having sexual relations with a woman. And because I'm not doing that, then I'm not a man all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. You can say I'm not a male. Then that's fine. I'm not binary anyway. Yeah, yeah. But you can never say I'm not a man. Because if we had to look and compare notes, I'm more of a man than most South African men will ever be. I, 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 in, in closing this topic of, of, of what people have perceived you as, do you think TikTok has been responsible for one of the deepest pains you've ever experienced in your life? It, it has, yes. There are many pains that I've gotten because I'm on TikTok. Yeah. Um, I mean, right now, the police are trying to hunt down a man that made it his sole duty to try and kill me. I've had to move my apartment because my address was leaked um, on Twitter because people felt I don't deserve to exist. Sure. Um, and standing up for yourself is not okay. So I've had to move. Moving costs money. It's December. Everyone's trying to save money. Stress. I am trying to. Right. Um, I've had to be conscious of everything I do. I've turned down events. I've turned down work that's meant to pay my bills because... Like, for example, it's like a st stadium event. You must sense out to the environment. You know, yeah. and, and I can't protect myself in a stadium sure. event. So that then limits my earning capability because I'm afraid when yeah. I arrive in that state. Because for someone to go, this is Dominic's address, do what you want. Mm -hmm. You are literally telling them that they can do whatever they want with me. And whatever they want is harming me. Mm -hmm. They're not putting out my address because they want to send gifts and well wishes. They're putting out dress because they want to harm me. Mm -hmm. Why they want to harm me? Because I'm not letting them be homophobic towards me. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. And also, um, um, this idea of people thinking that all of a sudden, just because I've put myself out there on social media, then I'm supposed to take whatever comes with it. No. Yeah. Just like how you have an opinion and you think it's valid, there's responsibility that sure. comes with that. Sure. People want to run away from the responsibility and they just want the opinion. Mm. So there have been pains that have come from TikTok, but the the joy and and the excitement that people get when they see me, when I interact with them, when I bump into them in public, the messages from fathers who go, my son is gay, I don't know what to do, what do I say? That over overweighs and outweighs those little moments where people are trying to break me. And and can you remember which moment was the most hurtful? Um, I think. I'm, I think I'm going to start by saying homophobia for me, when it comes from a man, it's like, ugh, expected. The homophobia that hurts is when it comes from a woman. Um, the very first time that I got a woman that actively made it her duty to go to every single video and pinpoint how I will never be a woman. And the more I tried explaining to her, I'm not trying to be a woman, I'm non-binary, and I explained what it was, and I... I um, told her to Google it if she needs to. We can have a con. Like, I literally humbled myself to the point of no return. I was like, if you need me to meet with you, I'm willing to meet with you. I begged her for her to, ex one person out of thousands that loved me, I begged one person to accept me because I didn't know why she hated me <laughs> because I saw a motherly figure. Sure. And she's being toga. I've been to Mama. Yeah. I tell her, I'm at DM. I'm at the end. I'm at the end. As you're trying to be, as you'll never be, as a source of my period, you will never have, I mean, couldn't make the other words she said. Mm. And that broke me because it came from someone that otherwise I would have seen yeah. as a motherly figure. A nurturer. A nurturer. Yeah. That broke me. From men, ah, I'm, I'm a. Just be cool, my lap. But when a woman imposes that on you, and you almost see someone that would be a motherly figure. That threw me off. It wasn't so much what she was saying. It was how much, how much conviction she had in saying what she was saying. And when she said that, I remember I sat down. I don't even think I worked that week. I just sat down and I just kept crying. I just, every time I woke up and I looked at myself in the mirror, I saw everything she said. You'll never be a woman. You'll never be this. No more I fucking make up or saw the wabanji. Da, 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 to the point I stopped wearing makeup for a while. And I felt like I was an imposter trying to be 
something I'll never be. Sure. And it took a while to remember who I am. And yeah, that, I think I think that was the very first moment that really, really broke me. The second one was the guy was trying to kill me. Those are the two top moments in terms of breaking me on social media. And now again, okay, the whole address being leaked and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I want to speak about something that's more heartwarming. Um, you know, straight people have a template. Uh, th- many straight people actually don't realize this, that they are born into a world that, a world that has given them a template. The template is grow up, you get blue or pink clothes based on being male or female. You're assigned that at birth. Um, so you can immediately, just if you're straight, it's easier. You will wear the pink clothes or the blue clothes. Mm-hmm. You will be the protector or the nurturer. You'll be the one who makes the money or take care of the kids. Um, even in sexual relations, you know who has this genital figure, who has that genital figure, and this is what you do with it. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about what to do in these certain things. There are, no, there are not many nuances. Mm-hmm. In your case, as a person who's non-binary, um, how has been it trying to find and be in love? <laughs> it's been hilarious. Um, so when I started out, well, when I figured out that I'm non-binary, because at first I was like, I'm androgynous. Uh, uh, uh. I don't even know the term non-binary. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's new. I don't yeah. know other people knew it before I did. Um, dating has been tricky. Um, every single person that, well, not every, but majority of people that have tried to ask me out, um, once again, goes back to me being a fetish. For them, I'm a fetish. Then I remember there was a guy that once said to me, if you're not wearing makeup, I'm not coming over. And I'm like, wait, hold on. So every single time you come over, if you come over five times a week, I mean, face beats a day. And I asked him why. He's like, because without makeup, I know you're a man. I'm like, but I am male. I'm not a man, I'm male. And that doesn't change. Mm-hmm. And then it's the men who will say, but I won't kiss you. And I'm like, so Jola Nani. They Jola with the idea of, it's tricky. It's tricky because there's a very thin line between um, me just being Uput Dominic and me being Usis Dominic, and yet I'm telling everyone I'm in between. Mm. Um, but also what confuses people is the fact that I wear makeup. And I'm like, this is just how I like to present to the world. But I'm still non-binary. Sasa, I'm be shocked if you find me in a three-piece suit and a tie and my head is bald and fagging or kicking bobos. That's how I felt that day. Mm-hmm. Um, dating has been really challenging um, I got sexually assaulted by a guy not so long ago um, who came into my apartment posing as a work interest to basically a document of sorts. And I was like, no, come up, come up, I'm busy. I would met him a few times. So I felt okay letting him up. He came up. When he came to my apartment, next thing I was being dragged literally and thrown onto my bed and he was trying to rape me. Luckily, I was able to get out. Um, and... He kept repeating, you are my B word, you are my B word, you are my B word. And it kept reminding me and kept affirming the fact that South Africans don't don't want to see anything different, one. But also, I will forever be an enigma and a fantasy to people. Mm-hmm. So I'm also very cautious as to who I let into my life. Mm-hmm. Because when they see me, they get turned on, I have a big bar, my big lips, and oh, my fucking lipstick, da 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 and the weird and funny thing is, is some women that come and attack me, I go on their profiles, I'm like, eh, this is your husband, I go on my DM, I'm like, oh, <laughs> husband doctor is here as well. Mm. I'm a fetish to most people. Yeah. Most people don't want to love me, they want to experience me. But truly, have you ever been in love though and felt warm in someone's embrace and be like, Lomundu Tanda? Before non-binary, okay. I, I've, I was in love with someone. And that was the last time I felt love. So that was still just gay. Just, just. But not expressing as yeah. non-binary. Yeah. That was. Yeah. The last time I fell in love with someone was in 2017. I've never loved anyone after that. I've Do you think you have the it. capacity to love somebody again? No. I think now it's a mental choice. Now it's a mental choice of, okay, Sharp, you are doing this. You are doing this. You are doing this. I like the things you're doing. You care about me. You care about my existence. You care about my family. And then therefore, I want to build a companionship with you. Mm-hmm. But me, oh my God, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. butterflies, I don't have that capacity. I've tried. Yeah. I don't know what switched off in me and I don't know when it switched off, but it's off and I've tried to turn it on. I've tried convincing myself. 
I've dated different people. Need to think. You know, we've been clubbing some parts of it. You know, um, and none of it switches that switch on for me. Yeah, so I just I don't know how to be in love. I don't know what it feels like to be. I even forgotten what it feels like to be in love. Dominic, love is beautiful though. Um, love is beautiful from friends. Love is beautiful from our family members that are loyal to us. Because it's not every family member mm-hmm. that loves you. Love is beautiful, even in the romantic sense, mm-hmm. where. You feel warm, where you feel chosen, mm. where you feel protected, even if whoever is the protector. But mm. even we take turns in protecting each other in a relationship. You know, yeah. sometimes you're protecting me physically or emotionally mm-hmm. or mentally, or I have a place where I can vent. Yeah. Um, don't you feel a void in that area of your life? So in terms of love from family and friends, I, I don't lack that. My friends make it a mission to make me uncomfortable every day by telling me they love me. Because they want me to say it back. And me saying it back takes a lot. Like, mm. I don't know. If a person has ever said, Dominique has said to me, I can say I love you. Because also, like, people that follow you will say I love you. And I'll say I love you because I acknowledge that that's how you feel. Mm. But that I love you has no feeling attached to it for me. Right? My friends would literally make it a mission to say they love me. All of them. All of all of my friends. They'll be like, oh, Gaktang, I love you, Gaktang. And I'm just like, okay, cool, shop, okay. And then? You know, and I say it back, and then I have to say it back, but I've never said, oh, I love you. Right? I love you for me is very platonic. It's very like, I see you, I got born, you exist, I acknowledge you. That's it for me. The love from friends and, and family, I don't lack, I don't miss, I feel it, I see it, I embrace it. Although I don't say I love you back, but the love in a romantic relationship, I struggle with. And I don't know who that person will be. Because also, isn't it mm-hmm. I don't know who that person will be that will ever make me fall for them to the point where I love them. Um, there's a lot of traumas, I think, that I have not addressed. I think that have led me here and I acknowledge they exist, but I just don't have the capacity nor the time to address them because uh, let's keep it moving. You know what I mean? Um, so I'd love to be in love. I, I think I missed the idea of being loved by someone. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Owa Manja, it's just still going to be a mental choice until I feel that again. So you are acknowledging that there are traumas there that are informing this decision. Oh, it's not uh, a decision that you've voluntarily taken mm. because voluntarily you've tried to mm. not be like this, right? Mm. And you are promising me that we will take steps, baby steps, small, 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 small <laughs> steps, um, no matter how long it takes yeah. because all, all our lives are different. Mm-hmm. To get to a point where you learn to open up more mm. to people in that way mm-hmm. and perhaps be receiving of love because there are people like me who watch you from a distance, who love you from a distance. I might not have access to you. And there are many people who truly love you, Dominic, yeah. on the internet. They want to love you, but you are denying them access. I know, also, therapy much. I know, <laughs> I'm aware, Ngyazi. Um, but I just don't think I'm at a point where I want to be vulnerable. There's nothing that I've be, ever been vulnerable to that has ever ended well. Mm. There's nothing that I've ever loved that has never left or hurt me. Mm. Um, and I feel like if I were to open myself up the way I would like to in my head, imagine me opening myself up for everyone to... I know it's going to end in a horrible way. So this that you see is me going, and when it comes, I go, oh, Dominic, who do you pray to? My ancestors and God. Mm-hmm. Mm. And what do you say to God when you, you pray to God? Because once again, another... I feature of God, I pray to my ancestors. Another nuanced relationship um, because... For the longest time, people have dictated God through religion, Mm -hmm. the system that religion has made up. Mm -hmm. Um, But people have negated God as a relationship that is personal Mm -hmm. with the person. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that God um, speaks to all of us, every single one of us, Mm -hmm. um, in a manner that is unique to us and what is uh, 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 relevant to us in our lives. Mm -hmm. Because no two people's lives are the same. Mm -hmm. So where are you right now with God or your ancestors? And what do you, what conversations do you usually have? I've always been a God child. Um, people removed Christianity from me. I didn't remove it myself. Sure. Um, one specific incident in 2012, the last time I went to church, 
Um, my pastor of the church, I went to invite a Nigerian pastor to come and preach. And I think he then gave that pastor the 411, which I'm gay. That time I didn't know I was gay even. Um, and I was made to drink uh, 500 milliliters of olive oil to remove the gay spirit in me. And that was the last time I had a full on relationship with God. Mm. I, 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 for a long time, hated him. Mm -hmm. Um, I hated anything that dealt with God, Christianity. I think sometimes even when I speak, I, I call myself to order because I speak from that hurt moment. Yes. Um, but then I discovered what you're saying, which is a personal relationship mm. with God. Mm. Mm. So when I speak to God, generally our conversations are, like, like, do something. You gave me the brains, you gave me the skills, you gave me the talent, you gave me the smart opportunity, EP for me to use the things you gave me. Mm. You want me to fulfill these things, whether it's ancestry things or whatever the case may be. I can't do them without a man. I can't do them. The biggest prayer I have is protect me long enough that I live and protect my mom long enough that she enjoys all the hard work that I put in. I know she enjoys it now, but she's not enjoying. Mm -hmm. I wanted to live in a state where she even forgets that we were poor. My prayers are always about my family. They are always about my mom, my siblings. How do I protect them? How do I make life easier for them? Um, the conversations I have with my ancestors are always, as ancestors, and then I'm here. I don't ask to be here. So don't make my life difficult. Make it easy. Um. I, 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 I think you were rejected by the church and the Christianity system. Mm -hmm. And as you're saying, it has caused elements of disdain for God. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that some of that that disdain is, is, is towards the wrong person. Mm -hmm. Because let me show you how you are actually still a representation of God without you even realizing it. You know, God loves every single one of his people fully, wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. And there is a marginalized community. God protects marginalized people, which is the queer community. Mm -hmm. Without realizing you've become an activist for queer people, mm -hmm. you've saved the lives of queer people from harm where other people are trying to harm them. Mm -hmm. And do you know that that is God at work through you? I've never seen it that way. Yeah. I've never thought of it that way. Ever. Yeah. Not once, even monthly. Yeah. I've never seen it that way. And thank you for putting it that way because now it's like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've, I've honestly, I've never, I've never, I've never. I don't know how emotional we are going to. I don't, I've never seen myself as anything. I don't see myself how people see me. Okay. And I don't know if I'm ever supposed to see myself that way or it's okay that I don't unless I don't see myself the way people experience me, the, the the way when people walk into the mall and they cry and they hold me and they tell me their story mm. or they DM me their traumas and they DM me their, their situations or um, when they DM me, ask me to take them to a metric dance and I do take them to a metric dance and I pay for everything. I'm still feeling, I'm still doing, okay, I'm just doing. Mm. I've never in my head, even in my third eye, I don't see myself the way anyone sees me. Mm. It took a long time when, when Abad were like, oh my God, you're so pretty. I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see it. Yeah. Um, to the point even now, I'm on a weight loss journey a little. I'm not trying to lose too much. When I lost weight, I didn't see it until someone read out there like, you started here, now you are here. Yeah, yeah. Then I looked at myself in the mirror. I was like, oh, actually, I see it now. Yeah. So I'm very blinded to a lot of things. I'm very dumb to a lot of things. A lot of things. I don't see myself how I think I should be seeing myself. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, right now it feels like, okay, it's fine, Dominic, just carry on. Because also I feel like the day I see myself, I'm afraid that I might have a big head. Mm -hmm. And I'm almost okay with never seeing or experiencing myself the way people experience me. Okay. It's okay if they experience me that way. That, that makes sense because you lose yourself when you try and fit into the role that everybody has given you. Yeah. Because remember, that's a role. It's mm -hmm. not who you are. Mm -hmm. Who you are is the person you wake up to mm -hmm. and live out on mm -hmm. a daily basis. Um, I want to speak about, uh, you didn't venture into TV recently. Um, I think this is important because that TV show um, also represented you as a person who has public fallouts, who is targeting others negatively, who is not interested in the growth of others, 
Whereas you are showing yourself on social media as a person who's all about queerness. We all one, we're mm -hmm. together, we love each other. Mm -hmm. But here you are the villain once again. Once again. You are shown as the person who is hurting others and, and, and doing painful things to others. Take me through a bit because of time of what happened in that situation that um, placed you for where people see you as the villain. And if you've said any apologies to people whom you think deserve apologies from you. So I'll, I'll quickly say TV is edit upon edit upon edit upon edit. A lot of things are edited and we don't control what's edited. When you see the show for the first time, I see it for the first time. Yeah. I've had many conversations with channel. I've had many conversations with production to say, even before it went full blown, Dominique is a villain. When I started seeing the pattern that this is not who I am and this is not what happened. I started having the comment like, guys, you are painting me out to be, I don't like this. And unfortunately, you sign the contract, they control what happens to that. So I think a lot of people, to clarify firstly for whoever will watch this, a lot of people think I was angry because a phone call took place at my brother's grave. That phone call was edited to appear before the stick. So the phone call, it, it almost I showed as if I arrived at the grave, I got a phone call, then I went to my brother's grave. That's not what happened. What happened was I went to my brother's grave, spoke to my brother, lengthy conversation. Of course, they can't show the whole thing. Cried, my aunt cried, we cried. Then when I walked away, I was told, your phone is ringing. And I didn't answer it because am I living now? opened with the phone. Yes. Like in Tony Pole. Yes. But also I knew that we were shooting and I need to create context. So I then go, my phone was not even with me. I then go pick up the phone, I answer it. Then the conversation is simple. Oh, hey, how are you? I'm like, no, 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 I'm good. Um, and the person on the other end, whose name I will not mention, says, um, you don't sound well. I'm like, I'm not. Um, I'm at my brother's grave, da, 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 da. As if they didn't know, which by the way, they knew. We all film together. You know exactly where I am, <laughs> right? We have breakfast. We leave, you know, you know exactly where I am. Shop. But for TV purposes, you're the viewer at home. You don't know that that person knows. So we are painting a picture and filling in gaps for you the viewer yeah right cool not a problem they're like no let's do a bonfire so that you feel better like let's all come together nan 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 already it was an emotional weekend my family had seen me for the first time in real life in makeup they'd seen me for the first time in the streets um my grandparents so there's so many people have died in my family that we had to acknowledge and so it was just already an emotional day my brother's death for me is probably the most painful thing you could touch on in whatever capacity to the point that i don't even talk about it anymore I fought for my brother to be alive and I can't take you through that pain because you can never experience it, right? Brother's grave, all that pain, da 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 I get there and it's an ambush. What you don't see at home is the attack that happened when I got there. Mm -hmm. And also the reason why they didn't show it was because that specific episode is when I pulled out of the show. Okay. I pulled out of the show. I packed my bags. I was there with my friend. We packed our bags. I said, we are leaving. I called my cousins. I said, please pick us up. Mfunuglala Ekaya, because we're at a hotel. Like, Mfunuglala Ekaya, so that Sasas Vogue is the airport. My cousin's like, Shap, we're on our way. Channel calls me, like, you're not going anywhere. We are sorry that this happened, we're not going anywhere. Then my question was, remove this episode completely, because this is not who I am. And of course, they're not going to do that. And of course, they're not going to do that. Sign it before you even start shooting. There we go. Yeah. And also, that episode is what increased the ratings for the balance of the show. Sure. Because now people were talking about Dominique yeah. and the contrast and the between the, what they see on social media mm -hmm. and, and, and. Everything that happened of, after that were snippets of full conversations. And I, I really wish people could see the raw footage and see that what happened is not exactly what you are seeing. But unfortunately, it's entertainment. And me having that reaction was the reason why people watched because they were like, oh my God, Sam, Nyangi, Dominique, but Mfun Bonuguti, what are they going to do? And my thing to people is, if you know me, you know me. If you don't know me, get to know me. Come to my channel, figure out who I am. Um, most importantly, what I've said to people was, I was hired for a job, yeah. and I hope this doesn't sound arrogant, but I was hired for a job. I executed the job. The show ended about four weeks ago. You're still talking about the show. I did my job. Do you regret doing the show? A little bit. Channel is also away. I'm not, anything I say about the show, channel is, it's not like channel doesn't know. Yeah. I regret it. Um, and many people warned me also about one specific, they were like, this person is going to change everything that you are. And I was like, never. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they did exactly that. And people who are old apologies got apologies. The crazy thing about it is people don't know how many apologies I got from that person. 
where they came to me like, I'm so sorry, I had to do that because I needed content. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry, I had to do that because I needed a moment. Ngiakoni said, Dominique, I'm sorry, Dominique. I've had all of those stories. And my stance was one, if you were so freely, willingly to create content about my brother's death and the trauma that I went through for your ratings, use the same platform to say the apologies. I get you. You didn't. Instead, you kept sending me SMSs that had ifs and buts. That's not an apology. And every moment when the cameras cut and we were sitting, because I still was still cordial, right? Like this. So um, what social media is also doing is they're exacerbating something that's really tiny. Because and that's it. The difference is I am just not letting you in my space. Then everyone's like, you had dinners, you had things that you didn't invite. Mm -hmm. You caused me pain. Yes, you guys didn't see the full context of the pain because it's 20 minutes of a show of something that happened for the whole weekend. But I was caused pain and my apologies came behind the cameras. But them causing me pain was in front of the cameras. And I began to pretend that for your entertainment at home. So if people still think that's who I am, it's okay also. And it's fine. However, those who know who I am and what I stand for, and those of, those who have experienced me, they know who t that Dominique was edits. And I know keeps saying it's edits. It's almost like I'm justifying yeah, yeah. whatever. But unfortunately, that's the reality. It's just edits. Uh, Dominic Amanda Zaka is <laughs> a social media influencer, popularly known as the bold one, the loud one on TikTok. But I hope on Engineer Your Life, as we always do, you get to learn the vulnerable side of Dominic. Um, Dominic was able to identify elements of their life that they didn't know were there or are still going to be identifying further. But I want you to know, too, that this is not the end of it. I believe we have more to talk about. Dominic is an incredible, beautiful person, um, 30 years young. Mm -hmm. There's still so much more to do. Um, and I hope you'll come back and visit us again. Anytime. It's, Any it's, it's been amazing. Man's a part of sparkling water. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's, it's sparkling. Is that sparkling drink okay? It's very much okay. <laughs> I'll see you guys on the next episode. I love you. the epitome of luxury living. Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.